بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off last week where the sheikh he was discussing where people fall into uh, kufr by way of taking an intermediary between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thereby committing shirk as they ask things from this intermediary that which is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only and so by that they fall into uh, shirk, uh, the greater uh, the greater shirk in which leads them out of the fold of Islam. So the shirk continues, he says, قَالَ مَنْ جَعَلَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَسَائِتَ يَدْعُوهُمْ وَيَسْأَلُهُمْ الشَّفَاعَ So then the shirk reiterates what the original author, Shaykh Al-Islam Muhammad Ibn, Ibn Abdul Wahhab, uh, mentioned in his book, Nawakid Al-Islam, The Nullifiers of Islam, then, the Shaykh he reiterates that whoever makes between him and Allah an intermediary, whoever that might be, and calls to it or to them, whoever they are, and asks them for intercession, to intercede for them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so this is what's happening. And if you remember from last week, this was the topic and theme uh, that's continuing, inshallah, in this lesson as well. So the Shaykh he goes on to say, أي يسألهم أن يشفعوا له عند الله يذهب إلى القبور قبور الأنبياء أو الأولياء أو الصالحين أو نحو ذلك ويبكي عند القبر ويناجي صاحب القبر يدعوه أنا المذنب أنا كثير الآثام أنا المخطئ وأنت مقرب عند الله اشفع لي عند الله كن واسطة بيني وبين الله في نجاتي من عذابه خذ بيدي إن لم تأخذ بيدي من الذي يأخذ بيدي وهكذا في مناجاة متنوعة وإذا سئل قال أن أستشفع به وأطلب منه أن يكون لي شفيعا عند الله إذا كنت تريد الشفاعة رب العالمين قال قال قل لله الشفاعة جميعا والشفاعة ملك لله تطلب من المالك أو من غير المالك قال قل لله الشفاعة جميعا فمن أراد أن يحظى بالشفاعة يطلبها من المالك رب العالمين سبحانه وتعالى So then the Sheikh he mentions here and he gives an example like here where he mentions that seeking so they use a middle uh, a middle person between they place a middle thing or a middle person between them and Allah and they ask this person in the middle between them and Allah to intercede for them uh, and, and this is what is meant here so they'll go to a grave for example whether that's the graves of the prophets or whether that's the graves of the friends of Allah, the only of Allah, or if that's the graves of the righteous ones and the likes of that, and they'll cry in front of that grave, being there, they'll cry. And then they will say to the person who's in that grave and they'll call upon that person and they'll say things like, I am a sinner, I am I am very sinful, you know, I am I, I, I always fall into errors, for example. And you are and you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So intercede for me with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They'll say things like this, obviously shirk. And the shirk continues, he says, they'll say, be an intermediary between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so that you can save me from his 
punishment. And they'll say, for example, take my hand. And if you don't take my hand, then who will take my hand? And they speak like this. Uh, these are just some examples. And the Sheikh says, this is how this plays out in this kind in these kinds of situations. And <clears throat> and he's asked, he says, he, uh, so so if it says the person asked, he'll say that you know he'll say that uh, I I just seek shafa, I seek intercession with this person. I'm just requesting, you know, his intercession and help with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The Sheikh says, if you wanted intercession, yeah, and the intercession, of the uh, uh, and and Allah says with regards to intercession, the Quran, which we mentioned last week in last week's lesson. Then Allah says in the Quran that all of that intercession is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That it's the possession of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's in the possession of Allah. It's not for anyone else. So if you want intercession, then ask Allah for it directly. And the Shaykh just uh, strikes a question here. If you knew that, you know, that intercession, it belongs to Allah, all of it belongs to Allah. Then would you request it from the one who owns it, or would you request uh, would you request it from other than that? And the answer is that you would request it from the one who owns it in totality. And then the Sheikh repeats the ayah says, "Qul lillahi shafa'atu jamia." So then the Sheikh goes on to say, "So whoever wants, you know, shafa or is hoping for that or wants that and is requesting it and seeking it, then he should seek it from the one who owns it, i.e., Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." The Lord of all mankind and all the worlds and the mankind and jinn. So the Shaykh continues, says, Yaqulu, Allahumma shafi' fiya anbiya'ak. Allahumma jalni mimman yashfa' fihim anbiya'uk wa uliya'uk wa malaikatuk. Yadu bihada dua yas'alullah wa yulihu ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yitawajjahu bid dua'i wal munajati wal khudu'i wal dhulli wal khushu'i wal buka'i ila ghayrillah. بل يتوجه بظله وخضوعه وانكساره لله رب العالمين جل وعلا. So then the Sheikh goes on to say then what's the right way of doing it? The Sheikh says that you know you you make supplication to Allah. You ask Allah that you ask Allah to you know for that intercession and ask Him that He makes the you know that He makes His prophets. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and 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 those that were close friends to him, and the angels that he allows them to uh, make intercession for him when Allah has given them permission to do so. So this person, in this, in, in from the correct perspective, is asking Allah directly for his intercession, and that's how we should be doing, as the Sheikh mentions here, and that he shouldn't, um, he should not ask a dead person whatever they may be, or, or a thing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and shouldn't uh, lower himself and, you know, uh, lower himself um, and humble himself to other than Allah. Because obviously that's shirk then, as the Sheikh mentioned. Shouldn't cry in front of a grave or anything else besides Allah. So you should ask Allah directly to avoid falling into shirk. So this is what the Sheikh mentions here. So the Sheikh continues, he says, "Qala yad'uhum wa yasaluhum al-shafa'a wa yatawakkalu alayhim." So now we move on to the next part, where the Sheikh has said here that they call them and they ask them for intercession, and he's extra bit, and they place their trust in them. So they place their trust in other than Allah, basically. So the Sheikh continues. He says. He says here, وَتَوَكَّلُوا عَمَلٌ قَلْبِيٌ وَمَعْنَى يَتَوَكَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ أَيْ يَأْتَمِدُوا فِي قَلْبِهِ عَلَيْهِمْ لَا عَلَى اللَّهِ يَأْتَمِدُوا فِي قَلْبِهِ عَلَى هَاؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذَهُمْ وَصَائِتَ بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ يَتَوَكَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فِي نَجَاتِهِ مِنَ النَّارِ يَتَوَكَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فِي دُخُولِ الْجَنَّةِ يَتَوَكَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فِي حُصُولِ السَّعَادَةِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ يتوكل عليهم في تفريج همومه وتنفيس كرباته يتوكل عليهم في قضاء حوائجه 
وَحَلِّ مَشَاكِلِهِ So then the shaykh goes on to say, what does that mean? He says that at tawakkul, it is placing your trust is in Allah is an, uh, it's an action of the heart. It occurs in the heart. And he says the meaning of placing trust, he says, i.e. that you trust and that you re- rely upon Allah. And that all of your trust should be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of your reliance should be upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as contrast to that, uh, these people, what they do is they put their trust in other than Allah. They place all of their trust and reliance in other than Allah. In those things that they've made intermediaries between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they place their trust in, 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 in asking, for example, they place all the trust in that they would rescue them from the fire, that they would enter them in the, in, in the, in paradise in heaven, that they would, uh, be the means for them in obtaining happiness in, in, in the worldly life and in the hereafter. Um, and, you know, they place their trust in these intermediaries. Uh, as well from the point of view that they will get them out of their hardships and they will bring about ease for them and that they will fulfill their needs and provide them solutions to their problems like this. And of course, all of that is wrong. And it leads to shirk. So the shirk continues, says, وَتَوَكَّلُوا عِبَادَةٌ قَلْبِيَةٌ مِنْ أَعْذَمَ الْعِبَادَاتُ وَأَجَلِّهَا وَهِيَ عِبَادَةٌ تصاحب المسلم في كل أموره الدينية والدنيوية ونبينا محمد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إمام المتوكلين على الله رب العالمين فهو عليه الصلاة والسلام المتوكل على الله المعتمد على الله المفتقر إلى الله في كل حاجاته وجميع شؤونه فهو مفتقر إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى ملتجئ إلى الله في كل حاجة في كل حاجته وتوكل لا يكون إلا على الحي الذي لا يموت كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى وتوكل على وتوكل على الحي الذي لا يموت. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, trust it is a type of worship, is a type of worship of the heart. And it's the greatest and from the most magnificent types of worship. And it is worship that accompanies the Muslim in every affair of his. In every single affair on a daily basis, in every instance and moment, this wor- this type of worship called the work called placing trust in Allah, or placing trust in Allah is with him, it accompanies him in his religious and worldly affairs. So then the Shaykh he continues and he says, Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, the Imam of the, the ones who place their trust in Allah, he is the Imam of the ones who place trust in Allah. Jalla So then the Shaykh says, He alayhi salatu wa salam. He is the one who, put, who places the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and relies upon Allah jalla wa ala. And he also is, he loathes himself and is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muftakir. In every need of his and in every affair, daily affair of his. So he is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and he and he and he resorts to seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every need of his. And the Shaykh says, At tawakkul trust. And it can't be except upon the one who is ever living and never dies. I.e. Allah Jalla wa'ala. As Allah said, 
wa tawakkal 'ala al-hayy alladhi la yamut and place your trust in the one who is ever living who does not die and you can refer to that in surah al-furqan verse uh, 58 so the shaykh continues he says a wahdahu at-tawakkul la yakunu illa 'ala al-hayy alladhi la yamut wa man siwa Allah imma hayyun sayamut aw hayyun qad mat aw jamad la hayata la wa kullu hadhihi al asnaf la tastahiqu an yutawakkala alayha wa innama alladhi wa innama alladhi yastahiqu an yutawakkala alayhi wa yultaja ilayhi wa tufawwadu al umur kulluha ilayhi al hayyu alladhi la yamut كما قال في أعظم آية من كتابه الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء so then the shaykh he says here, i.e. placing your trust, all of your trust in Allah alone, only Allah. That you place all of your trust in Allah alone. And he says that at tawakkul here, it isn't except upon the one who is ever living and does not die, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it's other than Allah, and if it's other than Allah, then it's of two types of people or situations. A person who is living and is going to die at some point, or it is a person uh, who was living and died. Or it can be something that does not live, like a solid object, like a non-living object. And he says all of these types of what was mentioned, they do not deserve uh, to be for 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 uh, for our trust to be placed in them and rather the one who deserves that trust to be placed in him is, uh, or upon him is Allah jalla wa ala. and our affairs should be entrusted to him and should be left to him this is what the sheikh mentioned and he says al hayyu al hayyu la yamut the ever living who does not die i.e. allah jalla wa ala. And also in the ayah that we mentioned, uh, you can refer to uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, part of Ayat Al-Kursi mentioned there. And this explains this as well. You can refer to, to that yourselves, inshallah. Verse 255, Surah Al-Baqarah. So the Shaykh continues. Uh, he says, فَالتَّوَكَّلُوا وَالْإِلْتِجَاءُ وَالْإِتِمَادُ إِنَّمَا يَكُونُوا عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتُ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى So he summarizes here, the Shaykh, Hafizullah, and he says, trust and seeking refuge and reliance it isn't except upon Allah Jalla wa Allah, as mentioned here that, is, that we should place all of that in Allah upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody else so the shaykh says وَكَانَ إِمَامُ الْمُتَوَكِلِينَ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا خَرَجَ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ قَالْ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وبين عليه الصلاة والسلام أن العبد إذا قال ذلك قيل له هديت وكفيت ومقيت هذه ثلاثة أم هذه ثلاثة أمور تحصل للعبد إذا خرج من بيتي وقال بسم الله توكلت على الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله يقال له هديت وكفيت ومقيت so then the Shaykh, he mentions that uh, that the uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but whenever he left his house, whenever he left his house or his home, he would say the following supplication dua, which we read: Bismillahi tawakkal tu ala Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Uh, in the name of Allah, Bismillah, that I've, I've placed my trust in Allah and there is no might except, there is no might or power except by Allah. So this is a, a, a well-known dua. Most of us will know this. 
and if you don't then it's worth memorizing it's only short and as you'll see the benefit of the dua and the sheikh says that whoever says this and leaves it is said to him hudita wa kufita wa wuqit that you are guided and that that you've made sufficient and that you are protected and the shaykh continues and he says by this dua when you say it, uh you have been you are guided so wherever you're going you will you will go and you're upon guidance and guided and you are that allah is sufficient for you when he said that dua that allah is sufficient for you and allah suffices you of course and Allah will protect you. And the Shaykh then goes on to explain each of these three words. Hudit, wa kufit, wa wuqit. He says, Hudit, ay, tariqaka alladhi anta sa'irun ilayh, in kana ibadatun, in kana hajatun, tunyawiyya, maslahatun minal masalih, tuhda ila arshad amrik. Wa kufit, ay, kafaka Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma, ma ahammak. Alaysa Allahu bikafin abdah. والأمر الثالث قال ووقيت أي وقاك الله وسلمك من عدوان من عدوان مؤتد أو ظلم ظالم أو بغي باغ وديت وقفيت ووقيت وقال الشيطان لشيطان آخر كيف لكم برجل هدي ووقي وكفي وهذا الحديث يدل دلالة يدل دلالة واضحة أن الشيطان يبقى منتظرا خارج البيت ينتظر خروج الإنسان من بيتي وهذا معنى قوله في الحديث الآخر إن الشيطان قائد لابن آدم بأطرقه ولهذا يحتاج الإنسان إلى التوكل على الله في كل مرة يخرج من البيت مجرد ما يخرج من البيت يقول بسم الله توكلت على الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So then the Sheikh explains this supplication to us and he says, Hudit, he says it means that the path that you're taking, you left your house to go somewhere, that uh, uh, that you're upon that, that path, whether that be uh, uh, worship because of worship or a uh, uh, worldly reason, the daily duties that you're doing or a benefit that you're going to seek, then then uh, then you are guided and you know you're guided and helped along that way and kufit then the sheikh says for example that allah meaning that allah suffices you and then allah uh, then the sheikh brings an ayah alayhi allahu bi kafi nabda is it not that allah is sufficient for his slave yeah so allah suffices you allah is with you he's protecting you and then wuqit that allah protects you yeah, and keeps you safe from any kind of assault, harm, oppression, any that any of those kinds of things. So then the Sheikh says, and the Shaitan, he says to the other Shaitan, when 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 the Muslim says this, when he says the dua, the Shaitan says to another Shaitan, says, uh, uh, the Shaitan says to another Shaitan, he says to him, and and how is it? With a uh, with a man or a person who has been guided and has been protected and has been sufficed I, by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and and that uh, meaning that you know there's nothing you can do, there's nothing those shayateen can do. When you say this du'a and you put your trust in Allah and you leave your home by saying this du'a and following the word of the Prophet Sallam, there's nothing that that this shaitan can do to you, the one that's waiting, uh, waiting to attack. And the Sheikh says that this hadith it, it shows us, demonstrates clearly to us that that the Shaitan waits, waits, and uh, waits for you outside your house, waiting for an opportunity to harm you in whichever way they can. And that the Sheikh says, and that's why it also shows to us the meaning of the. The hadith where the Shaykh mentioned here, Inna Shaytana Qaidun Libni Adam bi atrukhi that indeed the Shaytan is sitting and waiting for Ibn uh, Ibn Adam, Ibn Adam, son of Adam, in in his path. 
or in his paths, the paths that he takes when he leaves his home. And the Shia continues, says, وَلِهَادِ يَحْتَاجُ الْإِنسَانِ إِلَى التَّوَقُلَ اللَّهِ فِي كُلِّ مُرَّةٍ مُرَّةٍ يَخْرُجُوا مِنَ الْبَيْتِ مُجَرَّدًا مَا يَخْرُجُوا مِنَ الْبَابِ يَقُولُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ تَوَقَلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَا حُولَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ So then the Shaykh says that the Muslim, the person, the human, the, the, the Muslim is required he must place his trust in Allah in every situation when he leaves his home. And should always remind himself of saying this dua, this supplication. And shouldn't leave without saying it, without saying the dua that was mentioned in this paragraph. So let's continue. The Shaykh he goes on to say, وَتَوَكُّلْ عِبَادَةٌ قَلْبِيَ وَهِيَ اِعْتِمَادُ الْقَلْبَ لَلَّهِ وَتَفْوِيدُهُ الْأُمُورَ إِلَيْهِ وَأُفَوِّدْ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Um, then the Shaykh goes say, يُفَوِّدُ أَمْرَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي جَلْبِ النَّفْءِ وَدَفْعِ اللَّهِ بِظُلِّ الْعَبْدُ الْأَسْبَابِ فِي جَلْبِ مَا يَنْفَعُهُ وَدَفْعِ مَا يَضُرُّهُ وَلَا يَعْتَمِدُ عَلَى السَّبَبِ وَإِنَّمَا يَعْتَمِدُ وَيَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So then the Shaykh says, and he demands again, that trust, placing trust, is a worship and so you place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's the it's, it's a worship of that that's related to the heart the heart and it is relying it's reliance of the heart upon Allah that you're relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you you leave your affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah and then the Shaykh brings an ayah from Surah to Ghafir verse 44 wa with amri illallah and so if we if we're going to have a look at the meaning of that uh, let's go to the Mus'haf and we shall see. It is uh, Surah, to, Surah to Ghafir 44. And it says, And my affair I leave to Allah. And my affair I leave it to Allah. And the Shaykh says that, you know, your affair, you leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in, in, the, in, the affair, in affairs such as obtaining was whether you're trying to obtain um uh, a benefit or, or something that good and benefits you or whether it's to push away and evil you always put your place your trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaykh mentions here that the uh that the slave of allah you know he takes all the ways and means of doing that so he takes the ways and means of doing that um uh, whether that be something that's going to benefit him or to repel an evil or, or harm, and the and this is important, and that the person does not um, does not um, rely on the on the way, and the sheikh says rather that the person he relies and places trust upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala completely. So maybe we can share an example uh, there. So something as simple as, let's see, um, okay, let's say you've got a headache and uh, you reach for a painkiller, whatever that painkiller might be, uh, pain relief. Um, when you take the tablet, uh, you know, you say Bismillah, but you place your trust and reliance in Allah, that Allah is the healer. But the ways and means is taking the medicine. That's one of the ways and means of relieving a headache. Uh, so you... Um, take the tablet you're taking the ways and means that Allah has placed for you yeah but your trust and reliance is in Allah that Allah is the one who's going to make that medicine work and Allah is the one who's going to heal you and relieve you of your headache not that you take the tablet and that you think that it's the tablet itself that's going to do anything so that, I think that's a nice and simple example for us to understand. And you can apply those examples throughout, uh, inshallah, our daily lives. So the Shaykh continues, says, وَتَوَكُّلْ شَرْطٌ فِي الْإِيمَانِ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ فَمَنْ تَوَكَّلْ عَلَى غَيْرِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَكُونُ بِذَلِكَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ لِأَنَّهُ صَرَفَ الْإِبَادَةَ and also this is very important now as well that the shaykh says that trust it has a condition it's a condition of our iman 
the six pillars of our iman. Our iman is a condition of our, of our iman, our belief. And then the Shaykh brings an ayah from Surah Al Ma'idah, verse 23. So if we go there, Surah Al Ma'idah, verse 23. And put your trust in Allah if you are believers indeed. And place your trust in Allah if you are believers indeed. And here, <coughs> excuse me, the Shaykh says that whoever places his trust in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then by that he has become a polytheist. And the Shaykh says because, the reason being, because he has shared some of his worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we all know, the definition of uh, shirk is associating partners in worship with Allah Whether that is just a little bit of that worship or Any part of worship If it goes to other than Allah You fall into shirk And this is what the shirk has explained here So continue للأموات يخافون الأموات خوف السر ويحبون الأموات حب الظل والخضوع فيتوكلون على الأموات تكون قلوبهم معتمدة عليهم الله والله يقول وتوكل على وتوكل على الحي الذي لا يموت وهم يتوكلون على الأموات ويتوكلون في قضاء الحوائج قضاء حوائجهم دفع الضر عنهم كشف البلاء على الأموات في قبورهم وهذا كله من الشرك بالله جل وعلا واتخاذ الوسائط بين العبد وبين ربه سبحانه وهذا كله من الشرك الناقل من ملة الإسلام والتوكل كما أسلفت إبادة تصاحب المسلمة في كل شونه الدينية ودنيوية فأنت بحاجة إلى التوكل في كل لحظة في كل نفس في كل دقيقة في كل حركة تحتاج إلى التوكل على الله تحتاج في كل لحظة أن لا يكلك إلى نفسك طرفة عين So, as the Sheikh mentions here in the beginning of this new paragraph that there are a lot of people a lot of groups, a lot of people sadly, they have magnified and glorified the graves of people the graves of the dead for example and they magnified as well that people who are living as well and they put them in a station where they've committed shirk and all this magnification glorification isn't except uh, for Allah it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone it's not for anybody else however when they've done this They've, they've basically turned these ibadat, so these types of worship, worship where we're talking about tawakkul in this lesson, then they've, instead of focusing this tawakkul and placing this trust in Allah, they, they've diverted that trust to other than Allah by way, by way, then they've basically um, worshipped other than Allah or shared part of their worship with other than, other than Allah. And so the Sheikh brings examples here. He says, for example, they fear the, uh, the dead. Those people that they go to, for example, they fear the dead. You know, they, 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 they are all, all they fear of them. Or they also, they love them as well. And they lower themselves in front of, in front of the dead. And they place all of their trust in the dead. Or part of it. Or all of it. They place. And as we know, as the Sheikh mentioned, it is, uh, placing trust is uh, a worship of the heart It's a type of worship that's related to the heart And whoever directs it to other than Allah Has fallen into polytheism, shirk And so the shaykh brings the examples And then he says, the shaykh mentions And he says, if you look at this ayah Where Allah says, and trust Place all of your trust In the ever living The one who does not die Ayy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the Sheikh says that the people, they place all of their trust in the dead. Uh, for example, as some of the examples he's brought earlier in the lesson, 
and you know they place their trust in in <coughs> all of their needs uh whether that be to try to repel a harm or to seek out um uh you know an exit point from their hardships and they go to their graves and they ask about uh, they ask the dead people for things you know that only Allah can give them uh, and they fall into shit by by way of this, as Sheikh mentioned, and they use these uh, people as intermediaries between them and Allah, as mentioned earlier as well in the lesson. The Sheikh mentions this again, reiterates that, and the Sheikh says, as as mentioned earlier in the lesson, and he says that worship, that worship it accompanies that at the work. At Tawakkul, placing trust is the type of worship that accompanies a Muslim in all of his affairs, every single day, in every moment of his life. So the Sheikh says that you are in need of placing your trust in Allah, of course, in Allah alone, in every moment of your life, in every single moment, in every single breath, in every minute, in every movement. You, the, the Shaykh says that you are in need of placing all, uh, your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the Shaykh mentions here. And that you don't <coughs> trust yourself and trust anything upon yourself or trust yourself or leave anything to yourself even for a blink of an eye. Meaning that you should always in everything as mentioned by the Shaykh in every affair in everything you do you place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh continues, says, وَأَقُولُ هُنَا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ مَنْ يَسْرِفُ إِبَادَةَ التَّوَكُّلِ إِلَى مَيِّتٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَاتِ مَدْفُونٍ فِي قَبْرِهِ فِي قَبْرِهِ مَهْمَا كَانَتْ مَنْزِلَتَهُ وَعَالَتْ مَكَانَتُهُ نَقُولُ لَهُ إِسْمَا إِمَامُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَسَيِّدُ وَلَدِ آدَمْ أَجْمَعِينَ يَقُولُ فِي مُنَاجَاتِهِ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين هكذا يقول في مناجاته ووصف هذا بأنه ووصف هذا بأنه دعوة المكروب قال دعوة المكروب اللهم رحمتك أرجو فلا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين وأصلح لي شأني كله لا إله إلا أنت أي لا معبود بحق سواك فما عليه الصلاة والسلام يقول ويوجه ويعلم الأمة أن يقول في مناجاتهم لرب العالمين لا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين فكيف يتوكل على عبد فقير إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى ليس له غناء عن الله بل هو مفتقر إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى في كل حاجته وفي كل لحظة وفي كل نفس سيدان الشيخ سيد and I say here, subhanAllah, that whoever <coughs> directs or diverts any of his worship uh, of trust, i.e. not placing his trust in Allah, but placing his trust in the dead, for example, who are buried and are in their graves, as one example. Whoever, whatever the station or status of that person may be, um, then we say to him, listen, we say to him, listen. The Imam of the Mursaleen, the Imam of the Messengers, and the chief of of uh, of Bani Adam, our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said uh, in his in a in a du'a, a supplication that he taught us. He said to Allah subhanahu wa taala. لا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين. Don't leave me to myself even for a blink of an eye. That's what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said when he supplicated Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And the Sheikh says like this. You know, he said it like this in seeking a rescue and asking Allah for that rescue. And he and he also described the supplication. I'll describe the supplication as the supplication of the one who is in distress, the one who is in need, the one who is in a tough situation. And he said, Da'watul makroob, 
اللهم رحمتك أرجو فلا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين وأصلح لي شأني كله لا إله إلا أنت أنا إذا أو الله يا يا مرسي I seek or I wish for your mercy I ask for your mercy for example so don't leave me to myself for a blink of an eye and rectify for me my affairs all of them or rectify for me my affair all of it and there is none worthy of worship in truth except you and this is what the Shaykh mentioned there that in explaining this and this is a dua that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught his ummah. And as you can see, turning to Allah subhanahu wa taala, placing his trust in Allah subhanahu wa taala, and that's why we should be following his example. The Shaykh mentions again, "La taqilni ila nafsi tarfatain." So then the Shaykh says, "Fakir fi tawakkul wa alabdi fakirin ila Allah subhanahu wa taala." To the end of the sentence which we read, then says, "How can um, how can uh, trust be placed?" In a in 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 a slave of Allah, in somebody uh, from the cre- creation of Allah, who is in need of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and who himself is in need, can't do anything for you, which is a reality. So the Sheikh strikes that point home here, for us, and then he continues. He says, "Fal Abdu bihajatin ila tawakul Allah fi kulli lahzatin wa fi kulli amr. Ida arat fi'la ta'atin anta bihajatin ila tawakul." إذا أردت قضاء حاجة من حاجاتك الدنيوية أنت بحاجة إلى التوكل على الله إذا أردت النجاة من عدو والسلامة من أمر يخفيك يخيفك أو يخيفك أنت بحاجة إلى التوكل على الله ولهذا جاء في الحديث كان عليه الصلاة والسلام إذا خاف قوما قال اللهم إن نجعلك في نحورهم ونعوذ بك ونعوذ بك من شرورهم توكل على الله والتجا والتجا اليه سبحانه وتعالى وتعالى انت بحاجه اذا اردت ان تتجنب ان تتجنب المعاصي والاثام انت بحاجه الى ان تتوكل على الله فالتوكل على الله عباده تصاحب المسلم في كل أحواله في كل أحواله يكون متوكلا حتى في نومك تحتاج أن تتوكل على الله لي ليحفظك في نومك اللهم إني أسلمت نفسي إليك وألجأت ظهري إليك وفوضت أمري إليك هذا توكل يقال in the norm. So then the Sheikh says, towards the end of this paragraph, we're nearly finished now, another couple of minutes, inshallah. The Sheikh says, so the slave is in need of placing his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every moment and in every affair. So, he says, if you uh, wanted, if you were uh, in need, and you have the need, then then you place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether that be an affair from the affairs of your daily life or something of a need or you're scared of something or there's there may be an issue or you're asking for safety and security then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and place your trust in him and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaykh mentions the hadith here of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he says for example in terms of like uh, fear w- uh, w- when there was a, a natural fear from the enemies of Islam for example the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said oh Allah uh, restrain them by their necks yeah, restrain them by their necks and I seek refuge uh, in you from their evil. So the Prophet says, and this is a, it's a co- common dua, well known dua, supplication. And this is a perfect example for us here as well as the Sheikh brought it uh, with context to what, what, what he's saying here. And the Sheikh mentioned those all things. So, you know, you place your trust in Allah and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. And he mentions a couple of things which he mentioned earlier. So uh, he also mentions. Uh, here, for example, uh, for example, when you sleep, you ask Allah as well to aid you. You put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects you as well in your sleep. And the dua here is that where the Prophet sallallahu said, Oh Allah, you know, I submit myself to you, you know, and I and I, sum- uh, and I submit myself and lay myself in front of you, and I entrust and trust my affairs to you, as in I leave my affair to you to take care of me, for example, yeah.
And the Shaykh says, this is trust. This is trust in Allah. At tawakkul ala Allah. With regards to sleeping, because this supplication is specifically for that. So the Shaykh says, فَالْإِنسَانِ بِهَاجَةٍ إِلَى التَّوَكُّلُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كُلِّ أَحْوَالِهِ وَجَمِيعِ شُؤُونِهِ فَمَنْ صَرَفَ هَذِي الْإِبَادَةَ الْعَذِيمَةَ الْجَلِيلَةَ الْمُبَارَكَةَ عَذِيمَةَ النَّفْعِ مَنْ صَرَفَهَا لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ سَوَاءً لِمَالِكٍ أو لِوَلِيٍ أو لِنَبِيٍ أو غير ذلك وقع في الشرك بالله سبحانه وتعالى لأنه صرف مهض حق الله سبحانه وتعالى على العباد لغيره ممن لا يملك لنفسه نفع ولا ضرا ولا عطاء ولا منع ولا حياة ولا حياة ولا موت ولا نشورة. so then the sheikh says here in the end he says so the person the insan the person the human the muslim he is in need of placing all of his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always in all of his affairs and in all of his conditions so whoever diverts any of that worship which is placing trust in the life whoever diverts it to anybody else then he has committed shirk whether that is to uh, a malik you know uh, a king uh, a friend of allah a wali whether that be a prophet of allah whether that be any anybody or anything and anybody else living dead or inanimate object whatever it may be it tant- it's tantamount to shirk which leave which causes you to leave the fall of islam and and your deeds are nullified so the shaykh says why because you are diverting that which is the right of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to other than to other than him to somebody that has no right over it and and in this case if we look into it as the shaykh explained he says you it's been diverted to somebody who does not who cannot uh benefit himself nor uh, nor benefit you if he's dead for example uh or can't repel a harm uh, uh from you or from himself so if he was alive he can't benefit you in that and when he's dead he surely can't benefit you and if there was a harm he can't repel it if he's coming to you he's coming to you he has no power over anything and that's why this is a big, big issue. And that's why it leads to shirk because it's a, it's worship that's being redirected to other than the person who deserve is in deserving of that, who is deserving of that worship. And the shirk goes on to say that it, nor can that person benefit or harm, or harm you, uh, or repel a harm, or nor can the person give you something or prevent something, nor can that person, uh, 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 give life or give death to something or nor can that person resurrect anyone and bring them back and gather them these are all the affairs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so this is what the Shaykh is saying here and and then inshallah we'll continue from next week now we we'll finish the lesson barakallah fikum subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha in ant wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayk sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته